Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're going to be looking at, again, at Relief Therapeutics, ticker RLF or RLFTF if you're trading it over the counter. Again, this is a company that's working on a drug called Aviptadel. It is a drug treatment. Uh, uses a polypeptide that's naturally occurring in the body. They are creating a synthetic version of it, and they have some interesting things. Today, as you see on your screen, we're going to be looking at a great interview that Jonathan Javitt had with Dr. Yo. Um, it was about mid-August. You can check it out if you follow the link, find them on YouTube. You can see that there. Um, looks like it occurred about August 15th. You can tell by the timestamp that YouTube gives you. So anyways, I'm just going to give you the rundown. I'm going to give you the brief synopsis. But one thing that was really great is to be able to get a kind of a personal feel of the leadership of people that are involved in a big drug like this coming out uh, during a critical time. So let's jump right in. And just basically from the top, uh, they're running uh, their major trial is a phase two, phase three trial in Houston Methodist in Houston, Texas, in the United States. At the time of the recording, they were still enrolling participants. They had about 82 at that point, and when they hit 102 patients, they were going to have a safety review done by their safety board. Like I said, they are still rolling, uh, enrolling. It's an ongoing study, and it's what they call their regular clinical trial. Uh, they're using a placebo. They have. Uh, an IV version or IV delivery, it's not the inhaled version at this point. The other thing that they have on top of that is an expanded access program. Expanded access is for people who are, are very, very ill. They maybe have cancer, or lung transplants, heart attacks, all kinds of really, um, really, really difficult patients. Um, and they call it the open label study. This again is with RLF 100 or Abiptadil being delivered through the IV. Um, but they do have results, and that's one really interesting thing, is that because they've been able to deliver uh, RLF-100 to these kind of expanded access, critically ill patients, they've been able to see some results. And so that's really, I mean, that's been what a lot of people have seen and what a lot of people have been uh, excited about. So they've also seen, he said, improvements in the O2 levels of those patients. So jumping over really quick, Dr. Jonathan Javitt. You'll see on the screen different bios about them and him and his team, but he's basically the founder and the CEO of NeuroRx. He's worked for the FDA. He's worked with the FDA as a professor who advised them on different programs. He's also worked in industry and interacted with the FDA as he's been trying to get different drugs approved in the past. He says he's been successful with seven IT and biopharm startups. He's worked for Merrick Novartis, Pfizer, Allergan, and, and, and other companies as well. Also in the United States, he's worked under uh, both Bushes as well as President Ronald Reagan, President Clinton, and um, so he's had a long exposure to the United States government and public service. Uh, studied at Princeton, Harvard, Johns Hopkins, and he also has 200 scientific works published. Uh, he's an ophthalmologist, so he's an eye doctor uh, primarily, but he's been involved in um, one of their other drugs that hasn't got as much fanfare uh, is one for, uh, like I said, a psychiatric drug. Moving on, VIP, like I said, it's naturally occurring in the body. It's a protein, um, and it protects basically the cells in the lungs. Technically, the spike on the virus finds a receptor on the type 2 cells, which is a cell in the lung. And, and these cells that actually occur in cells in the body, they make this chemical called surfactant. Here's a quote. It says, VIP also has a specific receptor on the type 2 cells of the lung. And when it binds to that receptor, it goes inside the cells and it stops the virus from replicating. So it goes on. It, VIP, prevents the virus from making those cytokines that kill you. That's at the 7 minute 30 mark if you want to skip to that point in the video. Going on, it causes the type 2 cells to increase surfactant production. So because surfactant is a good thing, we need it in the oxygen exchange, it's nice that this drug causes the surfactant levels to actually increase. So that's that's good. In a couple weeks, he said they're going to start giving it to people in an inhaled form. So a couple weeks would be somewhere around first of September, about now when I'm making this video, for people with early stage Rona infection. So you're going to have the IV still for the critical patients, and that's their plan moving forward. And then you're going to have the inhaled version of the RLF-100, the Abiptadil, for people with early stage or mild cases. Now, I originally started following this company and looking into this drug because when I was looking at remdesivir, the real problem with needing to have people in an ICU or hospital bed setting, hospital setting, is it's very difficult. Yeah, basically, you're going to run out of, uh, of beds. And you're going to run into cases like we saw early on in Italy, where they were having to put people up in hospitals and old hotels and any any other like public buildings that they could find to kind of treat people. This is really a problem, and that's why uh, once I saw that problem with remdesivir, the IV form, I said, you know, wow, it's really really interesting to see other delivery systems and how critical that's going to be towards treating this pandemic. That was my personal take on everything. 
They go on to say, Dr. Javits says, that the RLF100 is both an antiviral and an immunomodulator. He says one of the nice things about Avitadel or VIP uh, is that there's been 50 years of scientific research that shows that VIP blocks inflammation in the lungs. You can also find some of the studies coming from the team out of Houston Methodist on the SSRN server. One of the things about the IV dosing with Avitadil or RLF100 is that the interviewer said that you would uh, take it or a patient would take it every 12 hours, uh, three dosings. And Dr. Javit didn't didn't really clarify, so that's something we should look at. Uh, or I know there's a lot of eyes on this, a lot of people probably know about the dosing. It wasn't exactly clear, but he also didn't correct the interviewer. So it could be right or it could be wrong, or they could still be trying to sort that out. As far as the inhale, inhaled dose, uh, he said it is being worked out, uh, but previously uh, they used it on sarcoid uh, patients and it showed significant results. One other thing to know that VIP, it's a strong hormone. It does have some side effects like diarrhea. It does lower the blood pressure, which is normally a concerning thing. Uh, but in a clinical setting, doctors are easily able to be able to provide other drugs in order to help people maintain the appropriate blood pressure levels. Um, this is about one in six people experience the diarrhea side effect. The interviewer then asked him about the EUA, the emergency use access, and Dr. Javit uh, said that he met with the FDA earlier in August of 2020. So that that's something that they're talking about or could be talking about. RLF 100 has the main study site. Originally it was in Miami, but then also UC Irvine out in California, University of Louisville, uh, and then also by the end of August, he expected that there would be a total of about 10 universities working with RLF-100, Avitadil, uh, administering that to patients and tracking the results. He said that they stopped the EIND, which was like the experimental investigational new drug study, because the FDA actually approached them with a request to stop, and they suggested instead that they wanted uh, NeuroRx uh, and the teams at these different hospitals that I just mentioned to start an intermediate-sized population expanded access program. He said one of the other things that they put together for doctors that instead of the doctors having to file their own requests for INDs, that NeuroRx has actually already written a protocol. And so it helps institutions, hospitals, basically begin using RLF100 in their hospital. Um, so it kind of lays a template out for them. Then in the interview, they begin to talk about manufacturing capacity. Some of the people that you'll see in the photos is the COO, Robert Bestup, uh, who currently or previously worked at Lillian Pfizer. And then Richard Siegel, who was the quote-unquote head of the J&J &J portfolio. I pulled up their LinkedIn's, and so you'll see that in the video as well. They said that they're going to announce a partnership with the largest U.S. supplier of inhaled steroid drugs, sterile drugs, and that there was another partnership with a large distribution company with overnight delivery capabilities to hospitals. So they, they could basically move drugs uh, overnight, and so in a very short time frame. And he thought those were two big important developments that he wanted people to know about. Essentially, they said that by the end of October of 2020, they would be able to manufacture enough doses for 100,000 people per month to be treated. So that's important. Not 100,000 doses, uh, not 100,000 people for the rest of the year. It's 100,000 people per month could be treated. So if they need three, three doses per person, okay, that'd be 300,000 treatments, right? 100,000 people per month could be treated. And then the last thing that they really ended with, as far as my notes, was the, the results from the Brazil study. Uh, people who survived had higher levels of naturally occurring VIP in their bodies. And so that's really interesting. Yeah, I hope you guys appreciate that information. I'm going to be doing another quick overview of an interview that was done by the Relief Therapeutics Chairman of the Board, Ram Salvaju, a very interesting guy. It's a very interesting interview as far as uh, where they're going to be able to raise some of their money, some of the things about share dilution, and other things related to the private equity firm that they have backing them since uh, five years ago. So.